anything that the, 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 the community wants to throw, to be honest. Uh, some things I'm able to answer, some things I'm not allowed to answer from a legal standpoint. Of course, Electronium very much embracing of a regulatory environment. Uh, so there are some things that we can't talk about. Mostly uh, those things are about price of the asset itself. So uh, if we could avoid things about that, that would be great. Uh, I always try to, to, to get as close to... Uh, to them as I can without to, I skirt around things as much as I can, let's put it that way. So I have a whole bunch of questions that have come flying in. My team are picking the questions out, firing them into my uh, phone. So uh, uh, hopefully that's a good way of doing it. it saves me uh, keep looking all around. So I've got the very first question. Uh, are, are there any, oh, sorry, is there any way other businesses that complement ETN's ecosystem can work with your OTC desk the same way any task does? I have uh, no doubt that that would be something that the OTC desk would be very keen to do. Uh, ultimately, uh, the OTC desk themselves are, of course, a profit-making entity. They're not; they're nothing to do with us. We we don't make any margin from them or anything. They are a completely separate business. They do OTC trade. Sorry, that's over-the-counter trade for those who are, uh, are not uh, into that term. So, this uh, people will go to an exchange and make. Uh, trades themselves, or you can go to an OTC desk who would do it for you. They are normally used uh, for large buyers and large sellers because they will break orders into smaller parts across multiple exchanges and do your work for you. They may have a better understanding of, of trading than you do, so they may well achieve you uh, a better price. Did I just say the word price? I'm so sorry. Okay, so uh, the OTC desk, yeah, I mean, uh, at the moment, they, they haven't they they do have a they have a brand that is that is forward facing. So let me let me find out whether I can get that and just publish it. I'll, I'll ask them first. They only really want to deal with with people that are a, a reasonable sized businesses. I don't think they want to be doing you know hundred dollars here, and a couple of hundred dollars there. However, if if a business has got a, a good solid plan, I have no doubt that they would want to work with them. They make a few percent margin off it themselves, and uh, I suspect they'd be. Delighted to have more clients. So yeah, let's 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 do more of that. Uh, right. Uh, any updates to the website? Have a separate wallet for personal and for your business. Okay. So well, at the moment, slightly slightly tricky because we we the same as exchanges do. Largely, they KYC a person. Know your customer for a person. Now you can identify yourself as a business by completing the vendor details. And for our uh, NGOs, we're still doing KYC. We're doing the, uh, the the due diligence on the on the NGOs themselves, but we, we still do KYC for a person within that organization. So that is the same as you'd expect to see on KuCoin, Huobi, uh, you know, anywhere else. You'd expect that even if you're creating an institutional account, you would put in all the details uh, in institutional account terms, what they're worried about is beneficial owners and some of these other things, but they still ultimately want to look at someone's passport, a real person. So. Uh, we are, we're very much like that now. You, you can create a, an account right now that is assigned as a business, but we have to assign it at our end. Uh, or, or that you can put the vendor details in, sorry. Any plans to add biometric and face ID into the app? The answer to, to that is uh, it, perhaps or maybe. Uh, I'm not going to commit to that 100%. It all comes down to the Android devices that we are predominantly on. Now, bearing in mind that a great deal of our use is on older, slightly less sophisticated smartphones in the developing world. Um, I understand that you know a lot of our community have got a shiny iPhone, uh, but uh, or, or, or a top of the range you know Galaxy. But um, as that as that technology it starts to become slightly older and and more available to our target audience, then then yeah, I think that we would definitely be um, incorporating it. What new functionalities do you envision for the app? Okay, somebody put those either in the right order or it is the same person. Uh, that's a really great question. So we've got lots of exciting ideas for our app. But one thing that I will do whilst we're online, and we've got a few people uh, uh, here, we are very much open to other ideas. Somebody just threw in an idea there. So whilst we're chatting, and I'll talk about the ideas that we have, if anybody has ideas, bearing in mind that I've got a team monitoring the chat, the chat right now, 
throw those ideas out there because if there are ideas, they can scoop them up and perhaps we haven't thought of them. You never know, do you? So throw some ideas in while you're, uh, while you're listening and, uh, and we'll definitely collate them and, uh, and we can uh, have a look at those. But there are a few things that, uh, that we're definitely, definitely doing. So we're, we're creating a, uh, uh, a little uh, directory uh, contact list sort of thing within, within the app to enable you to name accounts. It's quite tricky at the moment. Um, it's all right if you scan the QR code if you're physically next to somebody. That's great because you can still scan their QR code. But once you've done that once, it kind of makes more sense to be able to add them into a little directory so you could name it. So, uh, you know, when we envisaged it being used for street vendors or walking into a store or what have you, you know, then uh, in that respect, you know, you're always going to use the QR code system. But actually, people are sending it to friends, they're sending it to family, they're sending it over as a remittance to enable them to top up whenever they want. So actually there's a very good reason to have that and that is currently in development. So a list of just naming, effectively naming uh, 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 wallet addresses. We've also got uh, some coding underway to integrate between ETN Everywhere. Don't know if you guys have been looking at ETN Everywhere yet, but this is where we are now collating Everybody who accepts ETN, we vet them that you apply. They don't just go straight in, so it's not full of a load of spam. We're getting loads of spam, but they don't go straight in. They go to a human who vets them, make sure they are what they say they are, and then they get listed. And those are businesses that accept ETN. So this is now uh, starting to be a resource for people to go, well, how do I spend? And they are geographically tagged, so you can go and find the ones that are nearest you. So we're going to integrate that into the app for multiple reasons. One, because if we've got a lot of app users, uh, it, it encourages more people to, to accept ETN and to list ETN, of course. And secondly, because conversely, the people that have ETN uh, and are earning ETN through any task want to find places that they can send it or spend it. So you might have already seen, depends if you've done an update, but you might have already seen that the Electronium app wallet page has changed as well. That's a bit funkier now. So that has uh, the ability for you to see some of the places that you can spend. Only at the moment, airtime. Utility companies coming uh, uh, within June. We were hoping to get them out in May, but certainly uh, within June, we will see utility companies on board and they'll be listed on that wallet page as well. So places you can spend that are specific to you. So if you go into that and you're sitting in the UK or, or sitting in Spain, you'll get a different list to, uh, to, to, to everyone. You know, you, you get what it's available to spend for you. So a closer integration to ETN everywhere, that's definitely coming. And some of the fun things that we can do with geolocation could be very cool. So if we can geolocate, then we could say, oh, you're near somewhere that accepts ETN. So maybe we can get a little bit of uh, a proximity uh, uh, a tagging going on. So I think there's some, some quite fun things we can do there and some useful things. But, but meanwhile, uh, I've, I've spent so long on this question that people are waving at me. But so, so please get me some more ideas out. Maybe, maybe we'll come back to that um, uh, as we go on. Uh, when the new Byzantine blockchain comes out, does that mean the public can start mining? No, I'm afraid it does not. Um, not mining in, in a proof of work sense. Perhaps, perhaps there will be some form of staking, um, uh, but... But it all, what, it, what it all comes down to, and we have not got the, the full uh, decision yet on, on how we're going to do this. This is very much uh, still in the air. We've got the actual, the actual uh, blockchain concept is all drawn out in terms of this Byzantine fault tolerance. It, Google it. It's quite an interesting concept, but effectively it enables, it enables you to, uh, to have people that are giving erroneous information. So in other words, bad actors uh, discounted from, from a, a consensus. But uh, we've, we've got a whole plan, but in terms of the, the fundamental finality of do we just allow uh, organizations that we, that we are letting in with a pass key, which is kind of what we're doing right now, or do we uh, open it up to, to something further, such as staking, uh, which is you know, obviously uh, uh, taking off uh, elsewhere, I haven't got an answer to that, I'm afraid yet. But uh, if it is public involvement, it would it would not be at the low level end where anybody could mine on a CPU or or on a phone or, or whatever anymore. I'm afraid it would definitely be higher higher stakes game without trying to use a pump. Uh, right, uh, the M1 and M2 phones will they continue to support mobile reward earning, or is the system completely turned off? Right, uh, and then it says uh, how is this to be achieved? 
I did cover this yesterday, actually, but I'll, I'll say it again for those who weren't around. So the M1 phones, we, we know uh, when our own phones are online. Now, uh, um, it's probably public knowledge how uh, a, a manufacturer knows that, but I won't go to too much trouble before the botters start jumping on, on that and uh, uh, trying to figure it out. But uh, we, we have um, any account that is actually using an M1 phone is now receiving a small reward themselves. It's a tiny amount. There are, I can tell you that there are less than a thousand of these things that are actually out there and operational. Um, more of them have been sold, but they haven't necessarily got the Electronium app installed. So we we need to uh, we need to to keep those uh, keep those um, uh, people happy because remember on the box it said the phone that pays you back. We don't want to be uh, we don't want to be uh, 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 sold it under uh, you know uh, false conditions. So we are maintaining a reward for them, and it's being done out of public sight. It's not being done uh, off off the um, off the app. It's just being done as a, as, a, as a simple reward for being part of it, and we're communicating with those people separately. Oh, been logged out. Here we go. Uh, so uh, how does Richard? Oh, how Richard L strikes an effective work life balance. Uh, well, it's better. It's been better, slightly better actually. I've seen my children a lot more since we've been locked down. So I always used to get home late uh, and leave early and not see my children anywhere near enough. It's been an absolute pleasure to see them, even though they're moaning often, uh, and to see my wife more, which is a pleasure. So uh, I think uh, one of the one of the benefits, perhaps we we've, we've all had um, from from having this strange lockdown, is that. Actually, we, we, you know what, we see our loved ones a lot more. So uh, we need to embrace that and, and think the world is in a crazy place and you know, none of us wish for this. Of course, we all want to, uh, to solve the problem, but, but we also, also do need to look at that work-life balance and, and how we strike it. Uh, I think um, uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to see more of them. So uh, I don't know how I strike it in the future, but I definitely need to. Uh, you uh, mentioned Dash yesterday. Do you believe we have as much real-world use as Dash? Uh, well, I, I, I absolutely know that we do. In fact, I, I will go so far as to say I'm very confident that we have more real-world use than Dash. So, and again, don't don't get me wrong. I'm not slagging off the Dash project. I love the Dash project, and th there is there is plenty of room in the developing world for competing projects if we are competing. We are all, you know, 1.7 billion people. Uh, there's us talking about 100,000 or 120,000 top-ups of, of airtime and 270,000 plus uh, or 280,000 or whatever it is now app to app transfers. These are still tiny numbers in 1.7 billion people. So uh, I'm not afraid of being in a market with, with any other number of players. It's good for the public. It's good for the businesses. But uh, I'm very, very confident that we have more real-world use than, than Dash. Um, but, uh, but they're a great project as well. So please don't think that I'm saying anything bad about them. Uh, why doesn't any task accept ETN for payment? That's a great question. I mean, you're, here we are trying to talk about getting more places to accept ETN, and yet any task doesn't take ETN. That sounds like a very strange scenario, doesn't it? And, and it is from outside, but I, I'll explain it. I do, I'll, I'll explain it fairly quickly. Uh, and first of all, I'll start by saying at some stage, we will accept ETN for payment. Uh, we, we definitely need to tie it in to our KYC system, uh, and that is because we've done this, we've done this thing, uh, fairly, fairly clever thing from a, from a company structure point of view, that any task limited, bizarrely enough, has nothing to do with crypto. It doesn't touch crypto, and that enables us to have a banking relationship. And we have another company that that we buy services from with fiat and that touches crypto so it has a worse banking relationship but that doesn't matter because we've got the relationship the otc desk who have banking facilities so we've got this bit of a silly dance going on it's all because of the banks i'll, I'll, I'll just lay it out there the banks i do have an issue with banks hate crypto i can't imagine why that is let's have a little think about it. why would banks dislike it you know why right but banks are seeing the writing on the wall they're all struggling to come up with their own cryptocurrency solutions they're all coming up with the ideas of of how they could have a digital currency themselves but unfortunately they should be embracing projects such as ourselves we've got kyc we're under uh, uh, an embracing a, a regulatory environment and yet we are lumped in 
with every other crypto project out there and uh, and it's grossly unfair it will change it's already starting to change you're already starting to see those changes happen so uh so to to, to cut a, a fairly long story as short as i can what we've done is we've managed to get this great banking relationship and we've got fiat money coming in for the purchases now this is really important anyway i mean you're all part of the etn community and so what you have to think about is that's new money coming in to crypto and they don't even realize that they're buying crypto because they're not they're buying a service so that service is being bought with fiat so this is a new pathway of fiat money into what ultimately ends up being etn purchases because etn is used to remit the value from one person to another via this fairly complex com complex system of contracts and and companies but that's that's why we haven't done it at straight off the bat because we needed to get it live and of course the other reason uh just because we need this to be big we need we need not not 100 buyers or 200 buyers or a thousand buyers we need tens of thousands of buyers and if you look at the likes of fiverr for instance who's got literally millions of buyers so we we can definitely achieve these tens of thousands of buyers but can could we achieve tens of thousands of buyers if if let's say they're digital agencies in england digital agencies in in australia or or in uh, south america or north america wherever these digital agencies are that buy lots of little bits of digital video editing or whatever could we have convinced them to go and open an exchange account then buy some bitcoin and then transfer it into etn and then take the etn into a wallet and then buy three dollars worth of, of services they wouldn't have done it they just wouldn't have done it i know this once we get them on board remember that we we're taking them on a little journey they bought something how did i do that what the person's got paid in crypto well I, i'd heard of crypto but i thought it was all nonsense but someone's making their life better with crypto well you're starting to open the door to them you're taking them down the rabbit hole that is uh, the Alice in Wonderland world of, of crypto. So you're taking new people in and, and, and introducing them to crypto. Uh, we have a very big plan. I'm sorry, it's a very long answer, but uh, we have a very big plan. And it definitely starts off with exactly what we've got now. Fiat buyers, almost like for like with the other platforms then. Like for like, they, do they use Upwork? Mm, I'll use any task. Exactly the same purchase process. Very easy to get them on. So we're plucking the low-lying fruit. I hate that expression. I've used it twice. Uh, right. So that's the answer to that. Is it possible to see mobile operators transform into data airtime exchanges uh, where we could sell excess data on our plans for ETM? Well, that's a very specific and a very uh, detailed question um, that, that I don't have an answer to. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of legality in there, uh, and depending on which region they're in, et cetera. Is, is it possible? It is possible. Do we have anything? I, I have. I, I literally, I'm not even having those conversations right now. So much, much as I will always tell you, if, I, if I'm having conversations with people, I'll say it. It might not ever lead anywhere, but I'm always having. But this one, I'm not even having the conversation. So it's a great idea, like the concept, but but at the moment, it's 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 not on the radar. I'm afraid to say. Will Electronium have agents where ETN can be bought and sold locally? Now, once again, this is a slightly dangerous. Uh, uh, thing because we started to talk about buying locally, which almost certainly means fiat, which probably means I shouldn't even be talking about it. But what I can say is that that is it is already taking place. People, I, I know that that this already exists. Now the difficulty we have is that if we promote it as a business, is if Electronium promotes that, then we are a money transfer agent, and we don't deal in money. And, uh, and at the moment, we are not regulated to deal in money. We are, we, we are definitely under the, uh, the uh, umbrella of the regulatory environment for cryptocurrency, which is not money. As soon as you start talking about fiat and the transfer into fiat, you become a money transfer agent. That's not to say I'm ruling that out because I absolutely am not. And those conversations very much are taking place. Uh, and we're, 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 are we able to, to create that? We, we, you will very much see it. So it, it's on my radar. Very difficult thing for me to talk about, but uh, we are very aware of, of the benefits that, that Electronium can have if it ends up in fear. And I know that it takes place, but we are not able to promote that or, or facilitate it directly at this stage. Uh, uh, any incentives for using ETN to pay for utility bills or top ups? Oh, I see. Sorry, I understand the question. Sorry, I misunderstood. So, with any incentives for using ETN to pay for utility bills or top ups, it seems a bit more expensive making such payments with ETN compared to using fiat. Now that's 
A really, really, really interesting question. Anybody who watched my keynote, which was a little bit rambling about this, but my keynote speech definitely included the fact that we have massive market insight. I would go so far as to say we've got bigger market insight than any other cryptocurrency that there is for real world users. So I don't mean crypto enthusiasts making use of crypto because they like it or, or, or it's vaguely, vaguely useful. These are people that have genuinely got a benefit from it. And you've just seen, uh, we, were, we were announcing before this show, we were announcing that we've done 100,000 top ups. 100,000 was the sort of magic tick over number into the phase two part. We, we realized, you know what, we've done a lot here in the real world. But what's interesting is we've done 20,000 top ups in the last week. Why? Definitely price related. And I know I'm not supposed to talk about price, but this is really not about price. It's about people utilizing the value that ETN has. So all cryptocurrencies have volatility. It goes up, goes down. People are very aware of that, even though they did not buy it for fear. That I can absolutely assure you. They, they either earn some rewards or they earn some through any times. And or, or they, they, they were a street trader who got some through doing something. You know, there, there's many ways that people could get ETN. But that ETN has arrived with them and they are very aware of what its value is in their local denominated currency. And the top up numbers go crazy when it spikes a little bit. And obviously, just recently, we've had a large spike, and that large spike has resulted in 20,000 additional top ups. So, so it's an extraordinary thing to see how connected the market is. Now, so when you think about that, again, this is very difficult to talk about with regards to price. So I'm not talking about electronium now, I'm talking about any asset. If you have an asset that uh, was worth a dollar, and that asset was now worth $5, and you used it to, to buy something, but, it, but, the, but the something you bought cost five, it's five or 10%, let's say 10% more than it would normally cost. You're 500% up here, but 10% down there. It becomes, the 10% becomes irrelevant. And what you're seeing is that our market participants, so that was nothing to do with electronic, that was just coincident with conversation about how people look at things. So our market participants are market savvy. They are very uh, aware of the market forces. And, and what you'll find is that the volatility perhaps is, is why you're finding that the, the, the percentage extras. And let me just explain why it's slightly more. Some, some airtime providers uh, are slightly more ruthless than others in terms of this, and you can't blame them at the end of the day where, where they, they are at. But the, uh, but the airtime companies, um, some have got a bigger risk aversion, some have got less risk aversion. Some uh, airtime providers are actually selling bulk airtime under the price. So in other words, they'd sell a dollar's worth of airtime for 90 cents. Some airtime providers sell you a dollar's worth of airtime at a dollar. Now, if they sell you a dollar's worth of airtime at a dollar, it's physically impossible to, to sell it for a dollar because the OTC desk who's got involved in this and is facilitating this has to make margin. They have to do that. And there is a cost to the, to the cashing out process, to, the, to, the, to making ETN interfere. So if you imagine, that, the, that there's a 10% markup, that 10% won't be 10% profit, it will be exchange trading costs, administration costs, running costs, maybe there's a couple of percent margin in it. So uh, I think uh, it's a really interesting, um, really interesting uh, question. We won't be incentivizing people because people already clearly are incentivized. Bear in mind, I, I, I think I'm probably safe to say that if, if we're not the largest a cryptocurrency uh, airtime top up in the world. We are certainly uh, a whisker off Bitcoin and ETH. Bitcoin and ETH may have been used in, in, in other places. I do know that there are other airtime top up facilities. I don't know what they turn over, so I couldn't tell you whether they've taken more Bitcoin and ETH over the years that they've been doing it. Uh, but, but we are 100% absolutely guaranteed the fastest growing, 100%. We are, we are without a shadow of a doubt the third biggest cryptocurrency in the world that's used for airtime top up. If I'm, if, and that's giving Bitcoin and Ethereum the credit that maybe they're ahead. They might not be. We might be the number one, we might be the number two, but we are certainly no further out than the number three. So we're being massively used. That gives us a massive amount of data. So that 10%, oh, let me give you another example. Sorry, I've just to throw more examples in about why, why, even though the airtime is 10% more, why? Why, why, why would someone buy it? Well, remember that it's not convenient necessarily for these people. Remember, you've given a person the ability to pay for something digitally, perhaps for the first time. Whoever asked that question almost certainly is sitting in their room with a Visa card in their pocket. 
that was my uh, wedding ring on the chair with a visa card in their pocket and uh, and they've got a paypal account and they've got apple pay and then they look at that and think well i'll, I'll just buy that i, I would buy five dollars worth of their time for five dollars i wouldn't pay five dollars fifty but what you've got to do is you've got to put yourself into a village where that's not where you buy airtime. You get on your bike and you ride for 15 miles to the, to the town where you hand over your fiat currency for a top-up voucher, a scratch card. You scratch that off and you enter it in as a text message and you top up your phone. Suddenly would, you, suddenly, would you pay a little bit more to not have to do that for the convenience? Maybe you'd pay a little bit more. But maybe you wouldn't because these people would still travel distances to save money. But then remember that what if now you've got a new way of earning money through any task, sorry, not money, new way of earning value, new way of having value in your life. This is ETN, it's not money. So a new way of earning some value, which you can use to top up, and you might have earned normally on, on every day, you may earn 20 cents or 50 cents an hour for your work, perhaps. So, so if, if managed, you've managed to earn $2 an hour for your, for your work in value, not in money, they're not earning money, remember, they're earning ETN. So perhaps then suddenly the, the extra 10% on their airtime is, is less relevant. And also remember, any task doesn't charge 20% fees. I mean, Fiverr, for instance, charges 20% to the seller. You sell a $5 task, you get $4. There's his money. So 20% is lost straight away uh, on on most of those sorts of platforms so suddenly if you're if you're earning with zero taken away which is what any task is even though you might be paying slightly more for the things that you're buying with etn you're still up on the deal i mean straight away there even if you if you had your five dollars that you could have earned from fiverr you had your five dollars worth of etn that you could earn from any task for doing exactly the same thing you'll actually even with your 10 percent down on what you spent it on you're still 10 percent up on what you'd have had from fiverr so there, there are the reasons that, that uh, we won't be incentivizing anymore. People are already incentivized, and I think 120,000 top-ups shows how incentivized they are. We're bringing new things into the market, and it's, and it's very exciting to see its use. And, and the uh, analytics is, is off the chart exciting. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I've read that one. Uh, not by selling tokens, but as a startup, any plan to raise additional funds in the near future? Okay. Uh, once again, we get into the realms of a few things that I, I, I'm not supposed to talk about, but uh, I will say we're well funded for the future. Um, we've been judicious in our, our management of our business, and we we are not in a position that we need to look for round a sort sort of a Series B, which is bizarre in 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 these markets uh, with with running an ICO. But we're not in a Series B, Series C position. However, I think it is important to say. That because we we uh, we sold ETN uh, in a, in an ICO and it has taken us to where we are, which is you know unbelievable. We 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 really have made a massive impact in the market. So I think we've made a massive impact. We've got massive amounts of users. We've done incredible things, but we still have a hundred percent equity in a business that we could well use if we chose to later on to go down the, the PE, VC route or whatever, the more traditional uh, funding routes. So it's not on the cards at the moment because it's not needed. Uh, if, if expansion required 300 million to, to, to create infrastructure throughout the world or throughout Southeast Asia or throughout Africa, wherever it was needed, then clearly we, we would need uh, additional funds and those additional funds would be sought through more conventional means. So, it's not on my radar right now, but uh, but certainly the, the option would be open to us, which which is always good. Uh, will there be a desktop version of, the, of Electron in which we could mine? Uh, I think I've sort of covered that already. No, there, there, there won't be. There's no real there's no real public mining. I'm afraid. I, I, I wish I wish that there was, but mining with proof of work is is open to such massive abuse. And there's a there's a site. I think it's called. Um, uh, Crypto 51, someone get someone, one of our team will post it on there, I'm sure, or one of you guys can post it. It's a, it's a site that lists how cheap it is to 51% attack other people's projects. We used to be on there and it used to say that it would cost, I don't know, $10,000 to 51% attack Electronium, albeit um, uh, the, the, uh, the hashing power wasn't available to attack us because we have massive hashing power. But if you look at some of the other projects, it says, 
to, to 51% attack that cryptocurrency. And then you look and it says hashing power available 100%. So you could go to somewhere like EasyHash and just buy hashing power for a few hours. And if you were skilled enough and technical enough, you, you could attack that currency. And it goes on all the time. So it's a slightly terrifying. And the less technical product projects might not even realize it's taken place. So it's um, it's a slightly scary thing. So uh, we, we, we made moves to protect our blockchain, which is protecting our users. Ultimately, everybody who's involved in Electronium has to be protected with, by the best possible means that we can, by every means that we can. And so, so when, when we see that, uh, that, that, that at one point we had more than 50% of our hashing power was with one pool, I think at one point they went up to 70% of the hashing power was with one pool. That was a known pool, and the, the, you know, the guys that run that pool are honest businessmen. So we, we, we weren't in danger per se, but fundamentally, fundamentally, sorry, mathematically, we were in danger. You, know, you, you shouldn't have that much power in, one, in the hands of one entity. So uh, uh, yeah, that's why, we, that's why we moved to where we are, proof of responsibility. You know, I'm really pleased that we moved that way because it's given us such such room to, to do the great things on the ground that we're doing. But no, we're not going to have a desktop miner. Sorry, these answers. I answer things in depth, don't I? <laughs> Too much, perhaps. Should have just said no. Okay. I've heard from many who previously abused, now obsolete mobile reward system, that their wallets are suspended with all their coins. Plan with those coins. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, okay. So, and there are a lot of these. Uh, it'd be nice actually to, to do a, 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 an audit of this and publish it. I have no issue at all with it, and it might be eight hundred thousand accounts or something. You know, we, we we absolutely know we've got millions of users, but I, I want to be completely straight about the fact that there are some bots in there. So let's let's dig them out, find out how many are locked, and just publish it so that the, the number is out there. And it is it is certainly tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of locked accounts. Now, from a legal point of view, very 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 dodgy. Uh, this is value that, that was created and sent to somebody. My lawyers would freak out if we did anything with it, quite frankly. It sits there. You can consider those coins locked and unspendable by anybody. Unspendable by us, unspendable by them. If they were to, and they won't, but if they were to pursue this in some way legally, which this is a lot of people... Uh, very tiny amounts of money. They definitely won't do this, but I'm just talking hypothetically. If they would pursue it in some way, if we'd gone off and, and made use of those funds or taken those funds, it may not look good for us as a business. It, I, from my perspective, it doesn't matter that they are locked out of the, of the token economics. Those coins are, as far as we're concerned, burned and gone. So uh, uh, that's, that's what's happened to those. They'll just sit there indefinitely uh, unaccessible by anybody. Uh, is there a block height or date set for the blockchain update in July, or is it still dependent on development? Uh, no, I, I, I let that slip a little bit early um, uh, when I was chit-chatting about uh, uh, token economics, which I'm going to cover much more in detail later today, by the way, uh, in the, uh, the very short thing later at the end of the day. I think it's 4.45. Uh, so um, that... Um, I, I don't have a block height. Uh, th that doesn't mean to say that there isn't a block height set uh, or, or guesstimated for um, by by the blockchain guys, but I, I don't have it personally. And it, the, 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 it's it's a very simple fork actually. So so it should be really easy to do. We are merely uh, changing to uh, a, a a lower block reward. We're not making any other updates as far as I know. There may be some patches or something. I'm not sure. I don't think there is. So change of, the, change of the block reward should be very, very easy. It will be very visible. You'll be able to see the block reward change. Every block's block reward is shown on blockexplorer.electronium.com. So you can see it. It's running out around 1,700 ETN per block at the moment. And I'll explain more about what we're doing with that later on today. But uh, you'll, it's, it's going to be very visible and, and uh, a, a large change uh, in, the, um, uh, in the tokens inflation. Okay, let's have a look. Next one. Uh, um, are there already NGOs introducing any tasks to the target group? If yes, how are these experiences of more buyers needed before this happens? Uh, there are uh, there are two NGOs that have that we've talked to that have agreed to do this. 
they, there is some planning going on. We've we've looked at various areas. So we've we've done we've looked at a number of different places. Uh, I think. Oh gosh, I hope I'm not getting this the wrong way around. But I think it's with Wonder Foundation that we've agreed to do the trial in Nigeria, and I hope that that is something I'm allowed to put in the public domain. I'm so terrible with these things. Uh, that has so we are we are doing trials on the ground with with the with a number of them. That one I happen to uh, to know has got a little bit further down track. I definitely wanted to make sure the system was well tested. Ideally, I really wanted to have task school live with, with one or two simplistic tasks as well. So I'm desperately trying to get that live with some fairly simplistic stuff. Bearing in mind that genuinely people don't really understand that, that what seems to them to be no particular skill at all is actually a valuable skill to somebody else. Uh, if, if you have any ability to, to, to do anything artistic, you definitely, definitely got something that you could use to, to put on social media. You know, every single social media place in the world. Sorry, uh, I've got some huffing and puffing going on over there. I thought it was aimed at me. Every single uh, uh, social media account in the world um, uh, needs, uh, needs content. And so anybody that can create social media content can sell it on any task, but we do need to have a lot of buyers in there, which we're getting more and more of all the time. So uh, yeah, we've got some specifics. Uh, can you please explain in detail phase two marketing? When does it start? What can we expect in the crypto space? Uh, blah, 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 quite a long question. Uh, I can't explain it in detail right now, other than to say you should see by the end of next week, uh, you should start seeing uh, banners and various other things going on. So you'll, you'll start to see this dropping into the marketplace. We have some, um, some of the sites are sites that people visit in Korea and Japan and China. Some of them are, are Western Europe, et cetera. So uh, we've got uh, all, all, sorts of, um, all sorts of things going on. I haven't got a detailed plan to give you, I'm afraid to say, except we know we now, we've done something amazing. We've, the ecosystem that we've created is genuinely one of a tiny handful, if, if not unique. And, uh, and we need to shout about that because the, not everybody really knows about it yet. And, and when I talk to people and they go, oh, didn't realize you've done this, didn't realize you've done that. And then they see the numbers. The first thing they think about are numbers. First thing is they think yeah, they're making, uh, making those numbers up. And that's because we're in the Wild West and everybody makes up their numbers. It's so frustrating. So we've had people come and have a look. But like I say, we'll publish that study. Uh, if it's not this week, it'll be beginning of next week, where we've invited someone in. They've taken a look at, uh, at the numbers. They've pulled the database queries up. They can see it's live. They, they can see the back end APIs where we're where we're buying the airtime, whatever they want to see, we can give them access. So the, our numbers are absolutely, completely straight and legitimate. And uh, and, the, and we've let them come open to scrutiny. We've sent more people to, to this event than anybody else. So any nobody else sent as many people to this event. We've had, the electronic community has had bigger viewing figures than everybody else. So everybody else so you can read into that what you like but we'll get I, I want those figures to get published I'm not sure whether they'd want to publish them but uh, I, I will try and get those figures published so you can see the impact that Electronium has is, is huge so uh, more people need to know about it and we're on it uh, do you expect that after phase two marketing people will understand or notice Electronium just as they see or notice dash that's a good question I mean we had that dash question earlier so I don't want to Sound like I'm uh, I'm bashing Dash because I, I, I so am not. You know I like what they're trying to do and and are, and are doing. But uh, again, we get into a really dangerous area where we're talking about um, see uh, notices as much. Uh, Dash have been around for a long, long time, so they've got more market maturity. And Dash were around when there were only a tiny handful of, of cryptocurrencies. What I can say is that if people look at you know people scan their eyes over the top twenty cryptocurrencies. We are a top 10, top 20 cryptocurrency all day long by real world results. And do people need to know that that's the case? We're a top five cryptocurrency by real world results. So people need to understand that. I can't draw the parallel about uh, whether they'll notice as, as much as Dash. All I can say is that we, we will make every effort to make sure that is the case uh, because we, we, we absolutely deserve to be. Are there plans to market the Electronium API to the retail market or integrate with other EPOS systems? 
Yes. Uh, I mean, again, what you'll find is that largely the EPOS systems, uh, I mean, we looked at some EPOS systems to start with, but they, they, they were for the UK or they were for the Western market. They're not really the places that people are genuinely looking to spend ETN. And when you move out into the marketplaces that we are really getting these hot spots of activity, genuine engagement, genuine use, genuine benefit, they don't have EPOS systems. They, this is why the app to app QR code transfer system is so important. It's why we've had 270,000 plus, 280, I think was the last count, but 270,000 plus um, app to app transfers. People are using it like an EPOS system. How much is that? 25 cents. You can type 25 cents in, it will convert that to ETM. They hold their phone out, it goes bleep, they've got 25 cents worth of value, the person walks away. So that being said, uh, we actually have, right at the very beginning when we first developed it, uh, we had we were working with uh, a company that had a an EPOS system that works on Android uh, tablets, and it enables you to to integrate with uh, a payment a merchant provider as well. So you could have you could take credit card details and uh, and put it in, and you could does it does stock control, it does all sorts. Now we integrated with them, and that company uh, have reached out to us fairly recently and said they are thinking about putting that into the uh, open source uh, world. So enabling that uh, product to become an open source product so that anybody can make use of it. And that makes my, my, my ears prick up a little bit because the, actually if there's a genuinely useful EPOS system that does not cost a fair amount of money that can be used in the developing world, then I'm all over it. And I know that uh, there are NGOs that are promoting small businesses and everything else out there would also be key. So that's obviously why they've approached us. They they want to uh, to to get this out into the to the world and make make bigger use of it and, and get more people in in helping to develop it. So we'd be more than happy to to join in and uh, and help do that. So you may well see more on EPOS uh, later. Certainly, the more things we can integrate it with, the better. Uh, you say you are more confident now than ever that ETM will succeed. What makes you feel this? Is it easier to get partnerships, things moving quicker? Question mark. Right. Yeah. Well, all of those things. Uh, as soon as we started having uh, major numbers to report, uh, then then it, it's always it's the phrase I always use is, is this sort of joining an empty party. Trying to convince the very first people uh, to to accept ETM was most assuredly the hardest, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. And and once again, I'd just like to put out another big thanks to, to the guys at the Unlimited down in South Africa. Those guys put their neck on the line more than anyone else. And the guys at Cellcard in Cambodia, uh, they're amazing people. And they're doing it for one reason. They're not really doing it for profit. They're doing it because they want to make the people's lives better. And they saw that what we were trying to do was aligned with that. And they got involved. And that takes a lot of guts for a business to do that. To, to get involved in crypto in any way takes guts. And, and so, so, so I take my hat off to, to the people that have done this. And, and if, you, uh, if you go right back to that very first one where we were, we were talking to so many people, and uh, yeah, and the Unlimited were the very first, and, uh, and yeah, it's opened up doors, and those doors have opened up other doors and other doors, et cetera. Uh, now we've got utilities uh, coming online, uh, certainly, certainly by at the end of June, hopefully at some point during June, so you'd be able to use slightly larger amounts of ETN. You might only be buying five, ten dollars max worth of airtime and data a month, whereas you might well spend quite a bit more than that by orders of magnitude, perhaps. But certainly, ten or twenty or thirty or forty dollars are on utilities without a shadow of a doubt. So suddenly, it gives you the ability to um, to to pay those. Uh, with ETN as well. So yeah, I, I'm confident about ETN for, for, for so many reasons. One, we've got this massive market penetration. Two, we're now changing around to make sure that the, the, the crypto community is back involved in the crypto community, help us promote it. It's one of the primary reasons that we want the crypto community back on because they are passionate people. They're gonna help us get this out to the market. And because we've already shown genuine successes, genuine financial success, you know, if, uh, if you do 20,000 top-ups in a week, airtime companies, uh, you know, their ears they, prick up too because, because actually uh, it's been de-risked for them by, by the OTC desk so that they're not, they're not exposing themselves to cryptocurrency risk. It's, it's upside all the way for them. So, yeah, we are, we, we're definitely, definitely going to, uh, 
to, to move more quickly and, uh, and and have better things going on. Uh, right. Uh, oh, OK. I'm, I can't answer that question. Sorry, that was a, a financial one that I definitely couldn't answer. Uh, beyond uh, what was announced yesterday, can you give us any further information about what is planned for phase two or anything you'd love to see? Um, I sort of have already a little bit and I've covered ETN everywhere and ETN Donate and task schools coming along. Uh, advertising and uh, and bringing back the crypto community, uh, bigger pushes uh, into into more adoption uh, into a wider way. Uh, I'm going to cover this. I've got 10 minutes or 12 minutes later on to 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 try and encapsulate what phase two is and token economics and all sorts. I'm going to try and get that into my 12 minute slot later, or maybe it's 10 minutes. Uh, but so so it's it's quite a long uh, uh, thing. But I think you've probably already got the idea. We've built this ecosystem. Uh, any task is absolutely critical. So lots, lots, lots more promotion of any task because that's driving in buyers. The buyers are driving then the adoption of, of ETN. Those buyers don't need to be in the crypto market. It's hard to promote the crypto market. Hard to convince someone. You walk up to somebody who doesn't know anything about crypto and you're not saying to them, hey, have you heard of Bitcoin? Buy Bitcoin. Right. Well, even then they'd be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. You're saying you go and buy electronic. If they've never heard of Electronium, that sell is a hard sell. But is it a hard sell to say to someone, go and have a go and have a look at this? You can take an old photograph that's in black and white or sepia. These guys will, will add imaginary color tones to it and make it look like a brand new color photograph. You've got a torn photograph or a sun faded photograph. These guys will restore it. Oh, that's going to cost too much. I can't afford to do that. It's a doll. It's mind blowing. Some of the things you can find on there, the skills that are out there are mind blowing. Can we convince people to put their credit card in, which they use all day, every day for everything, buying everything? Yeah, of course we can. And we are. So so this is this is it. Any task promotion, 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 because any task is driving adoption of ETN. It's driving the whole ecosystem through. And, and actually, to be honest, I'd like to see competition for any task. I'd like to see other people. I've, I've been speaking to a couple of people who have craft sites. Unfortunately, uh, COVID-19 is has put um, a, a little bit of a spanner in works there, but we've got we've got an Etsy style marketplace that's powered by ETN that I know is sitting there waiting for market conditions to uh, to come back. It's not my project; it's just something that I've been made aware of by by a, a passionate ETN community member. We have uh, there's there's any number of, uh, of freelance sites out there, and if some of the smaller freelance sites realise actually this is a this is a niche, this is this is our ability to, to unlock a really low cost resource. I mean, what have we been doing as, as, as a global economy for, for decades and decades, if not centuries? We've been uh, and, and almost exploiting the cheaper labor of the East. So we've, where does everything in the world, everything that's sitting around you, look around your room, tell me how much of it did not get manufactured in China, right? Well, that didn't get manufactured in China because China are... Sorry, uh, that didn't get manufactured in China because China are the very best in the world at manufacturing. I'm sure they are some of the very best in the world at manufacturing because they do it a lot. But but if they did it because they are the cheapest in the world, right? So everybody goes, they flock to where it's cheapest. And you see a lot of other um, Asian economies uh, that that, ha that that are powered by the 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 massive um, wealth of the global north. Uh, or, or, or the West or however you want to describe it. But this, this money flow goes across because the manufacturing basis, the actual hourly rate of the people that do the stuff is low. Now, some would say that's exploiting, but equally, some people would say that that's giving opportunity. And that's where I'm at with any task. Uh, you know, is the guy who's edited that photo, there's a tear down a photo, he's going to painstakingly edit out the, the, the tear and give you back a digital copy that looks brand new and he's going to charge you a dollar. Are we exploiting him? Or if his regular work, if he indeed has regular work, but if his regular work, he doesn't enjoy as much and he gets paid less than a dollar an hour and it only took him 45 minutes, we've actually given him a pay rise. So I don't see, I don't see it as exploiting. I know that the world sometimes says, oh, we're exploiting cheap labor. But the word exploit is a strange one. We are exploiting cheap labor, but we are not necessarily exploiting the people. We are giving opportunity. And that chap that's earned the dollar, I can assure you, is over the moon with what he's earned and the fact that he's then gone off and topped up at perhaps more than a dollar's worth of airtime, he's doubly over the moon. So we've got this really interesting market, which is we're opening up a new place for 
the wealth of, of businesses to go, actually, I, I like cheap. Cheap is good because it means I can make more profit. And businesses like profit. So actually, if, if, if businesses can see any task and are exposed to any task, they, they'll come back again and again because actually you always buy. Like, if everything else is like for like, you buy from the cheapest. That's how it works. Okay. Wow, what a long question, right? Um, <laughs> personal question, do I prefer chocolate or cheese? Wow, that's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, what a strange question to ask and how it got in, I have no idea. But I, I, I do like a bit of Cadbury's dairy milk, I have to say. My wife has to hide it from me, actually, because otherwise it'll all be gone and she doesn't get any. Uh, but but equally, um, equally uh, a good old-fashioned pizza works well. So a ch chocolate, chocolate beats cheese, I think, in this case. As long as it's the right chocolate. Oh, I don't want any... Um, I don't want any chocolate except Cadbury's dairy milk. And it has to be English Cadbury's dairy milk. Sorry, I lived in Australia for quite a long time. Your dairy milk doesn't cut it. Right, uh, paying with ETN at the gas pump station. I mean, that's an American question, isn't it? Do you see this happening? You see, once again, you see we've got somebody that's in the crypto community. And sorry, I'm not speaking disparagingly about your question. Perfectly valid question. Gas pumps in the US, gas pumps in the, uh, in the UK. Um, I, I, I don't really see that happening anytime soon. Gas stations in uh, in Nigeria, yeah, but it, it, it may well already have happened. It may well already be taking place. You have to look at where the benefit is and where where the advantage is. H how is how are we going to get people in England to adopt ETM when they've got Apple Pay, they've got they've got Google Pay, and they've got Visa cards, and they've got every digital payment mechanism you can shake a stick at. Whereas you go somewhere uh, in Africa or Southeast Asia or wherever you go, and, and there are far less digital ways to pay and far more people that have no digital way to pay, that's where you're going to see this embrace. And those gas stations, 100%, I see them accepting ETN once they realize people have got some value. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing. And, and to be fair, you do need fiat off-ramps. Uh, so we are looking at that. It's a difficult thing for me to talk about, so I shan't. But don't think that we are not we, internally. We, we we are doing those things. I just can't talk about them a great deal because as soon as I do, I get the buzz. Okay, uh, let's look at the next one. Is any task enough for people all over the world to get ETN now that mobile rewards are gone? I'm thinking of ETN uh, for daily use, like M-Pesa. Uh, well, the answer is right now. No, it, it doesn't replace. Um, it doesn't replace uh, mobile rewards uh, entirely. Uh, it, it it will, but it doesn't right now. There has to be a switchover period. We are taking people's reliance on free. Remember that Electronium is not a charity. It's never been set up as a charity. What we're doing is great. What you're doing as a community, being part of Electronium, is good for the world. We are making the world a better place, which is what a lot of charities do, but we are not a charity. I, I believe very much in sustainability. And I believe that if you get a business model right, so the business works as a business, so it can afford to employ the employees and it can afford to do the things and pay the rent, and pay whatever bills are required. If the administrative costs of the business are covered and a little bit of profit and you still do good, that's what Electronium is. Now, we're not in that profit stage yet, as I covered yesterday, but everything is geared up in this business to enable Electronium to make a profit. And, and, and that's very important because if we want this to be around in 20 years, it has to be sustainable because we don't just want to take charity donations and hand them out. And that's what ETN Reward has been. It's been a little bit of a handout. Now, it's been a handout for a good reason. I said yesterday it's like handing out free samples. You walk into a supermarket, they've got cheese on a stick or a packet of little peanuts or some, some, uh, some rice crackers or whatever they're giving away that's, that, that you can try. Oh, I quite like that. Now, you didn't have to pay for that rice cracker, but they're not going to give you, they're not going to come out and give you all the rice crackers you ever want to eat. They've just tempted you. And that's what we've done with ETM Rewards. We had to keep it running in the way that it ran to tempt people. And it's most certainly done that. It's brought in massive user base with massive transaction volumes. Those transaction volumes will fall for a while, 100%. But, but we know that the interaction between, between people, that's still going to go on. And, in, and now what will happen is, the, the data internally will be far, far, far more, um, far, far, far more valuable to us because 
what we'll be seeing is we'll be seeing real world use of crypto that's actually being earned and transmitted around and less of the freebies being passed about to, to do something. So, so we're taking, we know absolutely that ETN has been embraced as a value and as something that can genuinely uh, give, uh, give benefit. We know it's been embraced for that. We know from the thousands, we've had hundreds of thousands of people log into ATOS, hundreds of thousands. We've had now, I don't know if we're over 4,000 yet, but we, we've had another at least 1,000 tasks. So we've got thousands and thousands of people looking to sell their tasks. They are going to be our core group, and we're going to see it expand as we work on the ground. But we had a quarter of a million people getting handouts. But, but you genuinely need to think about this as, as, a, um, as a concept. What do we want as a project? Do we want high token inflation, lots of people using Electronium, and, 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 a, and, a, and a, eventually you run out and, uh, and that's, that's we, we come to the end with no real understanding of what's going to happen? Or would you rather we manage things and then we understand exactly what the future is going to bring and we understand exactly where we've got hot spots of use and we drive those forwards and We've, uh, I, I think that you'll be very pleased with what we've got coming, but don't think for one minute that 250,000 people are going to suddenly earn their $3 through, uh, through any task next month because at the moment there's only three and a half, four thousand 4,000 tasks listed. So you see an awful lot of ETN is still being used. Remember, if you're that street vendor, you didn't get your ETN through any task. You got your ETN through, through the, the ETN being out in the environment. So... This is the same as fiat money. Fiat money flows around. Uh, and if you imagine uh, the, the, the journey of a $20 bill in an economy, it moves around, it moves around. It might never go back to the bank. It might go under a mattress for six months. And that's people who sit on ETN. They've had some rewards and now they make use of it. It comes out from under the mattress and gets used. That's nothing to do with the, the bank printing more. It's out there. And by pumping this stuff out there, we have put it into use, into the real users' hands that are genuinely passing it about. So we're still going to see much bigger use than just those 3,000 people on any task. Any task doesn't suddenly mean everything that, that happens on Electronium passes through any task. That's far from it. What any task is doing is bringing in a new fiat input into the system, which is going to be able to be taken a profit from later on, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting time to watch, but the data is going to become so valuable to us and, uh, and, and a very exciting place. This year is going to be a really exciting year for us. Let's have a look at the next one. Although secure, there have been concerns regarding how reliant the blockchain is on Electronium to run. Do you have any plans to make it more decentralized? Well, first of all, I, I, it's really, really, really critical that you understand that our blockchain is safer than a lot of decentralized blockchains. Now, it might not be, well, no, sorry, it's, ju it's just as safe as Bitcoin, just as safe. <laughs> Cross my heart, it's just as safe. Is it just as safe as, uh, as some of the top 20 below? No, it's more safe, much, much, much more safe. You look at most proof of work coins that are outside the top 20, they are super danger. And if you go and have a look, like I say, look at that, uh, look at that website. It's crypto, I think it's called crypto51.app or something like that. It shows you how easy it is to attack these things. We are our blockchain is super safe, uses up hardly any electricity. But to, to come on to the next part, which is have you any plans to make it more decentralized? I do like the idea. You know, I, I'm a crypto guy. I love the concept right from the beginning. So I do like the idea of, of, of heading back into a more decentralized model. But the more decentralized model has to be absolutely as safe as it is now because we, are, we cannot be 51% attack. We cannot be. We have spam traps to, so that if people create massive spam piles, we can deal with it. We can do stuff that other blockchain projects cannot do. So if somebody makes a consented attack on a lot of other cryptocurrency projects, they will be in trouble. At the moment, touch wood. We've got this moderated layer. Yes, sure, it is a centralized moderated layer, but the, the validators that are distributed are, are able to handle these things and we are able to protect the network. And so protection and security, massively important to us. And as long as we're not compromising that, then yes, I would very much like to do that. It is important for me to point out that whilst we, are, whilst we have centralized, 
the word decentralized, I, I, I've sometimes said we've got a decentralized layer. And, and some people in crypto don't like me saying that. So I, I will add that that's just as easily described as a distributed layer. It's globally distributed. Our ledger is globally distributed and held by completely anonymous people. I don't know all the people that own a copy of the blockchain. And it's really important. We have this Meteor feature on our GitHub. If there was a cataclysmic event uh, that, that took out the central authority, took out us, the Meteor feature, it's called this because if a meteorite strikes Maidstone and takes us all out, what would happen to the ETN? Well, the, the, the answer is that ETN would continue because of the meteor future, uh, feature and because of the distributed nature of our blockchain. So we are not like a fully centralized project. So even though we have fully centralized issuance of a validating ID, so, so these keys that enable validators to operate, that's fully centralized. Uh, and that's for the protection of our users. But we are not fully centralized like um, if you took uh, a meteor and and dropped it on, um, I don't want to give any names of a project, but I just thought of, a, I flicked through a number of, uh, of real world projects, but I don't want to drop meteors on them metaphorically, but pick a fully centralized financial um, product that is, uh, let's find yourself a, a, a digital payment method, like a card that's as close as you can get to us, a digital payment method. There's some big ones out there. Go and find one of those. One starts with R, one starts with M. Go and have a look at them, find them, and then metaphorically drop a meteor onto their central business and wipe out their entire core team. What would happen? I can tell you what would happen. It would disappear. All value in there would go into the hands of an administrator somewhere and everybody would face an absolute loss. That is definitely what would happen. Now, that is not what would happen with ETN. We would rise out of the ashes like a phoenix based on the meteor feature. So we are not fully centralized. So, but we, but we definitely have some centralized features. Okay, will you open ETN rewards uh, for when entering new markets or countries just for that specific market? Well, the answer is yes there. We, we, we've got these, the, the things that we do with NGOs will definitely be featured around localized rewards. And we will be introducing Electronium, introducing Task School, introducing any task into incentivized programs in smaller hotspots. We'll get these hotspots going. These, excuse me, these people have uh, families and friends. And as you start to see use and value being used, remember that virtually everyone in the world now has the ability to top up and that gives people real world value. So as these, as these uh, hotspots start to expand out and the ETN that's there starts to get distributed further out, maybe a street vendor starts taking some and they were outside of the NGO project. Now a shopkeeper starts and what can they do with it? Well, they can actually sell airtime themselves if they wanted to because they could now pay in ETN for that airtime so they can collect some ETN from the users, pay for some airtime. They could sell that airtime themselves by typing in the phone number of the person. They can do all sorts, so they can monetize it. So uh, I think that probably uh, covers that a little bit, does it? Yeah, yes, <laughs> we will be using them a little bit for that. But all reward programs are going to be within range of our token inflation uh, figures that I'll talk about further tonight. But everything is always going to happen within that, which is really important for the project. I'll explain that later. Uh, have you considered working with other gig economy infrastructure? Red Bubble. Oh, I don't know Red Bubble. Um, so be nice to. When I was saying earlier, I, I welcome competition. I mean, in, in uh, gig economy terms and freelance economy terms, yeah, cracky. I mean, if, if Fiverr came along tomorrow and said, oh, we don't really like the fact that you're, you're opening up a new market and you're nibbling away at our toes, um, I'm going to start accepting ETN and that will destroy you or I'm going to start paying out an ETN and that will get rid of any task. Great. Go ahead. Destroy us. You know, <laughs> it's not that it would destroy us, but you get the idea, right? If a giant whale comes along and says, we're going to start making use of this because, because we don't like the fact you're doing it, that'd be absolutely unbelievable, wouldn't it? So yeah, we, we can definitely, definitely, definitely welcome in other people. They should have it as a payout option because people, are cho people can choose it. They don't have to have it. I mean, with any task, they have to have it. But if you had an option of being paid with PayPal or paid however, whatever other methods they have, bank transfer, or being paid in ETN, then, uh, then some people would choose it. Uh, and that would give people choice. It would give people another market to sell their skills in, which I would absolutely welcome. 
And I do think at some point you will see uh, the bigger guys uh, take note. I mean, what's interesting is um, the, I think it was about 2015, uh, Fiverr actually did introduce Bitcoin payout, but, um, but they, they shut it back down because it, it wasn't well adopted. But of course, the, the cryptocurrency markets have moved quite a long way since then. One of the big problems you're gonna see with the likes of Fiverr um, is that they are a floated listed company. Uh, so, so them carrying out their accounts and, uh, and working in crypto risks their banking partnerships. You know, I don't think you're gonna start seeing them taking it anytime soon. But if we've got smaller people that can see this as an opportunity to grow, bear in mind, any task has been around such a short amount of time and yet it's got thousands upon thousands of listed tasks and has had hundreds of thousands of visitors. They'd be crazy not to, to jump in this and, and be part of our community, wouldn't they? Um, could a feature be built into the API where a third party can take a fee of a transaction to help boost adoption and interest in ETN? Uh, yes, uh, for, for some reason, uh, I actually did think that was in our original um, our original specification document. I think we, we took it out because uh, we thought that, um, that that scammers might make use of it uh, because there are so many people scamming in crypto. We suddenly thought, oh no, if we give people the ability to to easily introduce a fee and people see, oh yeah, I'm buying ten dollars worth of something, but actually nine dollars of it was a fee and they didn't realise. We just thought that there might be some scammers, but actually, if it was managed well, uh, I, I like the idea of of, of it. Of course, there's nothing to stop you doing it right now. Uh, you, you, for instance, if you took the WooCommerce um, plugin, it'd be very easy to 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 add something in there that 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 added ten percent, five percent, or whatever to to the to the ETN fee. Very easy to do. So uh, anybody could do it if they wanted to do it, but uh, but we don't have the facility to for people to just buy that right now. But it'd be great if they could just use it. I don't buy so use it right now. There's no plugin available that does it, as far as I know. But it is actually easy to code. So if anybody wants to do it, find a coder and it'd be easy to do. Right. Let's have a quick look. Uh, Richard, do you plan to offer more live sessions like this so the community can stay up today on the project? Do you know what? Uh, I was just talking about this yesterday, and I think we should. I think we should do whether it's monthly or maybe we do it every two months or every six weeks or something. But yeah, I think it would be a really good idea. Sometimes we have very little. We've had periods where it seems like very little is happening. Now, that's not true. We are crazy busy, always, 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 always crazy busy. So sometimes we just don't have anything to update the community with because, you know, if we, we embarked on a software project that's going to take a year to build, you know, so the update is still building. And sometimes I think people... Sometimes I think people doubt that we are doing what we're saying we're doing. You know, we're still building. But if you go and have a look at any task and how cool it is, and it is cool and it is awesome, and it works very well on mobile, it works well on the desktop, and it and it integrates well, and the corporate structure is is excellent, and the and the it, it's all just a very slick thing. And that you don't build something like that fast. So, you know, we, we set about it and, and sure, we were late on it. And that was my fault. I, I actually outsourced it originally. And, uh, uh, and what we got back was we, we just we couldn't have been proud of, uh, of what it was when it went out. So we, we had to just go, do you know what? We're going to have to build it with our own internal team. So we, we went off and rebuilt it, which made it much easier, much easier for people to understand single sign on from the app so that they don't have to have multiple usernames and passwords. All those things got created. And what we ended up with was this really awesome thing. But whenever I say, oh, yeah, look, we're working on that, we are working on it. So it will come out at some stage. And I do apologize that sometimes I'm a little late. But, yeah, I like the idea of doing a live session. So I'm going to talk to the team about that. And we're going to figure out some sort of software platform. It would be I personally would prefer it if we can get people to, to ask, can I? I mean, it's all right if some people don't want to go on camera. But it would be really, really nice if we could actually invite some people in and say, well, you can ask questions and we can have little, you know, you have a one minute or two minutes of one-to-one of -one with people that are they're asking the questions they want. You know, the, the questions, I, I, I did ask the guys today to vet some of the questions for, for price because yesterday I had to keep skipping past price ones. So I have asked them to be vetted a bit, but these questions are not really vetted. I'm just saying, grab the questions, whack them in, and I'll answer them as they come up. So, you know, I don't mind if someone pops in and asks me it directly. If we could avoid talking about price, that would be great. But otherwise, uh, I, I'm, I'm always up to answer any question. 
Um, Richard, I want to quit banking. How is ETN going to help me get rid of my bank account? And how long will it take to make it happen? Look, if you if you live in uh, in the in the Western world um, where we are absolutely uh, ensconced in the banking system, you're not getting rid of your bank account in your lifetime. I, I strongly suspect uh, not unless you want to live off grid. You know how how do you if you if you uh, most people have a mortgage. You know I I like to uh, to think that. Uh, um, I'm a normal kind of guy, and when I pay my mortgage payment, I don't pay it in Bitcoin. I, I pay it in uh, in pounds. So I think that everybody, I think everybody has this uh, this idea that that crypto is going to kill the banks. Certainly, it's not good for the banks. But do you want to borrow some Bitcoin or some electronium or anything else and buy a property with it, and then have to pay back that amount with the volatility that's in crypto? Imagine you borrowed um a hundred thousand uh, dollars uh bitcoin when bitcoin was was four hundred dollars and now you've got to pay back the bitcoin suddenly you, you you've got to pay back vast amounts so that's okay if you're earning in bitcoin your bitcoin earnings have, have gone up with the same amount of bitcoin but if your earnings are in a a, a, a pegged to fiat re relationship it, it, it would be devastating so look crypto aren't going to get rid of the banks anytime soon but that's not what's what we're seeing in the developing world. What we're seeing is that they don't ever bother to get banked. We already know there's 1.7 billion people at least that are unbanked in the developing world. What we're doing is we're giving them digital payment facilities without them having to get banked. I think unbanking someone is definitely a step too far at this stage. Much as I, I uh, might like the idea of it, most of us need to borrow to be able to buy the big things in our lives. You know, not, not many people have the, the amount of money it takes to buy a house just sitting around. They, they have to borrow and the banks are the facilitators of that. And I know that there are lots of uh, decentralized finance um, uh, projects, but I, don't, I haven't seen anyone buy a house uh, through a decentralized finance uh, system just yet. And I, and I think it's going to be a little while yet. So I don't think we're going to displace the banks just yet, much as I perhaps might like to. Uh, do you plan to help schools in impoverished regions learn new skills of any time? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We definitely, definitely do. Uh, we're all about vocation. So can we can we make people realize? And one of the other NGOs that we work with is, is working with uh, girls um, who are they, they really don't have many choices in life and when you see the choice they have it's actually uh, i'm going to get choked up just thinking about their project actually but they're um some of the things that they that they face in their lives are horrendous and if you can have a digital skill that you can learn and you can pass it on and you can use utilize it and actually monetize it you can genuinely make a huge difference right at the moment etn app allows us to buy airtime for prepaid accounts how soon could we see an option to also pay a monthly fee subscription? Okay, so when we first, in fact, uh, it was uh, part of our original um, uh, specification was to build a subscription system. Uh, if you look at PayPal's subscription system, it's pretty good. It's um, It pretty much does exactly what you want a subscription system to do. So you can log in and you can stop the subscription if you want because you, you're not happy with the service anymore or you've finished, you don't need it anymore. Uh, and it makes a regular monthly payment to X, to the magazine, or, or to a digital uh, content provider, or whatever it is, that takes place. So we had a specification to, to create that uh, in, um, in Electronium terms. Now, it gets, it gets um, slightly convoluted with lawyers, but we did get around it. So we can now build a subscription system. We haven't got one just yet, but we could build a subscription system with the instant payment system if there is sufficient demand. Now we had to take our coding skills where we figured the best possible things are for, um, for Electronium and for the project to succeed. And when we went and had a look at the areas that we were predominantly having adoption, which at the time uh, was, was South Africa, and now we've got a really massive amount of adoption in Brazil and lots of other hotspots around the world. We literally asked, and subscriptions were not on their radar. Now, when you think about it, we live in a in a in a, in a Western sort of world of, of of subscriptions for everything. We we think nothing of it, but 
you'd be amazed once you go out of that world into a world where every penny counts. Very few people subscribe to anything because every single transaction has to be thought about in terms of today's value and today's what, what else. I, I've got the money I need to buy my food. I've got the money I need to pay for my electricity to keep the lights on. People think about these things much more carefully than perhaps we do with subscriptions. So as we start to see the subscription model grow with, with more wealth uh, coming into the developing world, I actually think that ETN is going to be in a really great place for people to introduce a service into communities that they would never have considered introducing a service to before. Now, I've had quite a lot of interest from the gambling world, and I've avoided it uh, specifically because you know, we want to be uh, in a regulatory environment that's, um, that, that's, that's good. Gambling around the world has, is, is probably as frowned on as crypto, if not more. In some countries, it's out and out a massive crime. You know? so, so, we, um, so we've avoided it. But, but interestingly, that we, we have also got other people that have got subscription-based type services, a bit like the sort of the Netflix, not necessarily direct competitors to Netflix, but that type of thing. But the problem is that, they, that when they've given us their proposal, the cost has been prohibitive. Now, if they said, we're going to, um, uh, we're going to launch a Netflix style uh, uh, subscription thing, you can watch X amount of, of video. I mean, if we can find that with educational stuff, I'm all over it. But if we can find somebody that's willing to do this and we limit it or they limit it with their technology to to specific places. So it's in Mali, or it's in uh, or it's in Nigeria, or wherever it, wherever it is. And, and then we say, okay, well, it's three dollars a month. I mean, the things we were getting were saying, oh, it's fifteen dollars a month. Just said, these people haven't got fifteen dollars a month to do this. You won't get the take up that you want. But actually, if, if people if it, if it becomes affordable, then subscriptions will be all over that. Yeah, as once again, very very long answer for for yes. Uh, apart from mobile top ups and it's time you to add more ways. Yeah, I mean, it's fairly obvious, I think. Yeah, so, so the question was, are we planning to add more ways other than airtime and utilities? Of course, uh, you know, any time that we can find something en masse, it's quite hard. You know, put your minds to it once again. If you've got ideas, whack them into the chat and go, actually, this is en masse. But so bear in mind, by us targeting mobile airtime and data top ups, that enables us suddenly to, to focus one product sort of thing, one service, for well, 140 plus countries around the world, hundreds of, of operators, but all doing exactly the same thing. So we only have to code one interface and give it access to our users. And then we drop new countries and new operators in to, to, to encompass the world. And utility companies are very much like that. So, so actually the interface that's being written right now for utility top up, very, very similar. Now, oh, I'm tempted to tell you, we do have something else. To, <laughs> it's, there is something else being worked on, which I'm not going to say because we, when it happens, I'd much rather we had some fanfare around it. But, but we, there are other things being worked on. But if you've got other ideas of things that, that, that are ubiquitous, everybody has to, to, to pay them, you know, so... We all have our utility bills. We all have our mobile phone bill. It's ubiquitous. And if you can think of other ubiquitous services that, we, that, that you think we should, uh, that, that we think we should do, please whack them in, and, and we'll be really keen to, to pursue them. Is there any plan for doing a weekly update? Um, you want to get the trust base. Such doing such regular updates will help a lot. I mean, it's such a difficult thing. Like I say, we we have weeks where all I can say is. We've made more phone calls and the coders have got on with coding. So a weekly update becomes a little bit problematic in that I feel like we, we're we almost saying, well, it doesn't feel like much has happened. We've, we've got 40, 50 people or whatever doing something and they're busy and they've made things. So you've seen we've built ETN everywhere. If I'd have done a week, that, that's been six months work minimum, maybe more than that. But you know, would you really want a weekly update about how many lines of code we've written in ETN everywhere and know it's still not ready? I, I don't know. I, I feel like we need to have slightly longer than a week. I'm thinking more like monthly or every six weeks or something. I think when it says it'll help the trust, I think we should be at a point now where trust is implicit. If we were not who we say we are, if we were not doing what we say we're doing, 
we would have we wouldn't be here three years later still dropping out significant products and pushing forwards and making amazing things happen i hope that trust is implicit you can trust us to deliver because that's what we are doing and we've done it time and time and time again first for this first for that constant firsts in the market constantly pushing forwards constantly embracing new things we are you can trust us that if there's a week without me saying anything or anybody saying anything that doesn't mean that we've sailed off on a yacht or or, or we've gone out and bought the lambos we we are getting on with what we will come out with and announce next what we're doing next how we're driving more people in if you go and have a look at etn everywhere there are hundreds of new people that have said oh i take etn i take etn why am i not listed they've all come forwards so we've been going through those i think we we, we launched it at maybe i don't know seven or eight hundred people on there or something uh, at the end of uh, or i think it was the end of last week we sort of silently launched it and then um uh, and then we've just been getting these these huge amounts of people going ah, well look oh, my store takes etn and they, i'm happy to take a photo of the sign and suddenly we're seeing this is coming we've had 500 or something people uh, in just over a week has come forward and we're not going to keep that same amount of momentum because of course those people took etn every uh, etn anyway but those projects are being developed and they're coming out i know i keep talking about task score but trust me we're working on it and it will come out the 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 ngos on the ground it's going to happen everything that we talk about always comes out so yeah uh, please please do trust that, that we are working for the best possible results for electronium to gain the maximum momentum the maximum market penetration the maximum real world use uh have you thought about reaching out hey, hey funny have you thought about reaching out um to streaming sites like netflix amazon apple etc uh for for uh, subscriptions obviously um if we could work with the likes of of netflix uh i think we would love to do so but i mean once netflix hits um saturation perhaps there's something we could do i do i think that we're big enough yet no but it's always worth the phone call right so uh I, i'm more than happy our, our, our biz dev guys may have already done it actually but I, i'm more than happy to always reach out and try and start a tentative conversation what you tend to find is that these things come off the back of somebody already having a little bit of a love affair with crypto. Quite a lot of the people that we've dealt with, um, the, when you actually manage to open the door, it's because you haven't phoned up somebody that doesn't know anything about crypto. All they know about crypto is that in their head, crypto is that thing that criminals use, isn't it? Do you see that? And, and, and you'll be amazed how many people of those are still out there. That they, they, They're so um, uh, unaware of it. So you've got so many battles to win. So quite often you find that the doors that we open, it just happens that we've managed to find somebody in there that, that's also quite a, quite a believer in, in, in you know, sort of, uh, well, either they're, they're a bit of a libertarian or they, they believe in crypto or whatever. But uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm more than happy to reach out to Netflix. Uh, would you consider doing joint ventures with Fiverr Artwork? Of course, <laughs> crikey. Uh, like I said earlier, if somebody from Fiverr Artwork said, look, how would I go about making payouts uh, it, it, perhaps if they just picked a region that they can't get anybody from, you know, there are regions where they can't work. I'm, I'm not talking about ones that are, uh, that nobody can work. So we can't employ people in North Korea because it's under sanction. But you get the idea that that there may be places that they have absolutely no way of of, of getting finance to. There will be African nations, whole nations that that they can't get money to. So why would they not at least switch ETN on for that place? The answer might well be, like I say, listing. They're under if they're U.S. based, then they're they're under the guises of the SEC. And you know, crypto is is still in a strange place uh, in the eyes of the SEC. Can they accept crypto? Do they want to? Will it affect their banking relationships? There's a lot of things to consider. But I would work all day long with any other uh, gig economy sites to to help them integrate ETN because that's what I want. I want people who have digital skills to be able to tout them on the market. And, and we've built any task because we wanted to show that this isn't a, a pipe dream where we're going to have hundreds of sales. It, it, it can be massive with, with tens of thousands of sales, hundreds of thousands of sales, uh, you know, and then into millions of sales. Uh, that would take a yeah, couple of years to get to that. Uh, OK, uh, what if there comes a dollar crash, hyperinflation? How will you protect the value of ETN? 
<laughs> okay, well, number one is I can't protect the value of ETN. I can protect the ETN, which is part of security. The value of ETN is the price. I can't talk about the price. So once again, it's a question that's snuck through with prices a back door. But uh, if, if there is hyperinflation, and again, I have to talk in generalities because a price question has got in the door, but in general terms, in hyperinflation, in the Weimar Republic, in Zimbabwe, in uh, Venezuela to a lesser or greater degree, and again, please don't think I'm having a go at the Zimbabwe economy or the Venezuelan economy. It's not my place to do that. But if you are in anywhere where it has high inflation, and a lot of African nations have high inflation, you find that physical assets retain their value. So your grand piano sitting in your posh parlor in your embassy room in um, in one of these countries uh, in the local currency is worth a fortune more than it was yesterday because of hyperinflation. Now, does cryptocurrency fall into that commodity bracket or does it not? This is a much deeper question, but where you enter into is if you are if you if you have no money and you haven't got any food to feed your family, but you have some ETN, you, you better believe that you're going to sell that off as well. Oh, I nearly knocked the laptop on the floor. That would have been the end of that. Um, you, you're, going to, you're going to sell whatever assets you've got to feed your family, whether that's your Bitcoin, your ETN, or the grand piano in the lobby, or, or, um, or as it's more likely to be, your, uh, you know, your, your, your possessions and your table and you know, your bits and pieces. Hyperinflation is a terrible, terrible thing for, for economies and for people. So I don't know what would happen if we have hyperinflation. You will find that you would definitely get sell off of, of some assets. Uh, but, but whether Bitcoin would follow that market down, and I use Bitcoin as the example specifically, you get the idea. But if Bitcoin would follow the market down, I have no idea. And frankly, I don't think anybody else has any idea either. Uh, all crypto enthusiasts, myself included, would like to think that there is some disassociation from fiat with um, Bitcoin and disassociation from fiat with gold and perhaps an association between cryptocurrencies and them being a commodity more than they are a fiat type money. Certainly the, the, the supply on cryptos is limited and inflation can be guaranteed by mathematics unlike fiat currencies. So um, who knows? Long question. Like to chit chat about that, but perhaps not publicly where I'm going to get um, <laughs> sold off by my lawyers. Okay. What if it comes to so I've read the dollar crush one. Task school, will there be some advanced courses like AI, data science, machine learning, blockchain? No, there won't. No, it's not, it's not for that. Um, it's definitely not for that. It, it, it's for ridiculously basic skills, ridiculously basic skills. There, there might be, there may be some skills that are um, middle of the road. So some simplistic uh, tutorials on Photoshop, on using colors, complementary colors and, and doing design work or video editing on, again, we're probably trying to avoid Photoshop actually, whatever free tools are available. What, what free tools are available that people can use? Because they're the type of tools that we'd like to teach people how to use. Photoshop licenses, you know how much they are. Are people using Photoshop? Well, they might be using a hooky copy, if I'm honest, but so they're probably not using a legit copy if they are, because it's too much money for, for these people. So we're not, we're not trying to make tasks, task score and then teaching about AI. Go off and, and look at Udemy, go off and, and have a look around. If you, if you want to do a course on AI, there's some awesome AI courses out there. Um, I started taking one myself, actually, and then uh, after the first, uh, the first few, my, my brain seized up, and uh, uh, I, I think uh, I ended at uh, the vague understanding of a neural net, but once we got into the mathematics and the, uh, the heavy coding, I couldn't cope with it. And I am a coder, uh, so, uh, but not, obviously not a very good one. So... Uh, uh, yeah, go and have a look at those somewhere else. They, they won't be in task school. We're going to keep that to, to simplistic stuff. So how, how to manage social media for other people, how you can do data mining for other people and, and make it valuable. You know, stuff that people don't realize that they have a skill, and that skill is just their time and access to a computer or even access to a phone because you can do quite a lot on a phone nowadays. So that's, it's, it's going to be low-level stuff. 
Can Electrium create a site or app where people can sell items for ETF? Somebody else has created it. I, I look forward to it going live. Uh, I've not seen it, but I know that it's been in progress for quite a long time. It's Esky, uh, sorry, Etsy-esque. So uh, it's got that kind of flavor to it. Uh, I, I haven't mentioned it because I don't think that they would want me to just yet. But, uh, but all I can say is that when they, when they put it out there, we, we'll get behind it because uh, we'll get behind anybody who builds a site powered by Electro. And so we have a massive community. And, and quite frankly, I, I'm actually slightly surprised at, at the fact that we haven't had more people come to us. I genuinely think you'll find it's because people don't believe our figures. They see these headline figures of millions and they don't believe it. It's only when people... It's only when people actually realize, oh my God, these figures are real. And we've had it happen at this show actually, where people have said, oh my gosh, your audience numbers are massive. You, I'm like, you, you know how many people we've got, of course they're gonna be big. It's quite amazing that, that people just, even though they might have seen the numbers, they, they don't understand that the community is massive. So we should have more people coming, building stuff, powered by ETN, and then we'll get behind it and our community will get behind it. We've had uh, ETN donate, um, I think, Oh, I can't remember how many. There's thousands and thousands of donors. Oh, not that. Is it? Well, I don't know. Somebody, somebody from the team, post out on there how many uh, ETN donate stuff has gone on for me. We, uh, I'm sure uh, somebody was saying that it's gone quite busy. So, but I don't want to quote a number that's wrong. Somebody will post it in the chat. Uh, can you tell us what uh, any tasks sales projections are for next 12 months? No, uh, I can't. Uh, we, we're still too early to start making sales projections for, for months in advance. Um, you can start doing that once you, once you can associate a firm ad spend uh, to, to, to sales volumes. Uh, and at the moment, we are very much testing that all over the place. So we're, we're testing all sorts of things and all sorts of strategies. We've got another big strategy being coded right now to, to supplement that because we've got another inroad somewhere else. But once you know what your advertising spend is, for your return on investment on that advertising and you know that doubling your advertising spend uh doubles your return you know in, in real terms then you start doing forecasts and projections uh, we are not at that stage yet uh, that doesn't work infinitesimally of course you know that there's uh, the law of diminishing returns but uh we we know we know what we're doing we're getting it out there um i i, I can't give you those projections yet i'm afraid um is there a technical um, is there technical info available about how many TPS your oh transactions per second? Uh, well, our, our blockchain uh, has got has got scalable block sizing. So um, whilst uh, whilst uh, I I don't have that figure to hand, the best place, which I'm sure somebody would have already done this, is probably to Google uh, Monero Max TPS because whatever theirs is, and this is not me having a go at Monero, by the way. Once again, I always, whenever I say anything about Monero, I always want to say I was a very passionate believer in Monero and loved the project before I got involved and built Electronium. I used the, uh, we forked from Monero uh, uh, very much as a, a doffing of our cap to those guys. They're an amazing coding team and they've built some amazing bits of technology, which we are fortunate enough to be using uh, at Electronium. Uh, but one of the things is we've taken out a lot of the privacy. So actually more transactions fit in, in, in a kilobyte than do in Monero. Now that's by design. Monero is supposed to be secure. So that is not me saying anything bad about the amount of transactions Monero can get in their blocks. They can get just the right amount in, thank you very much. And they are far more secure, a gazillion times more secure than we are because we've chopped out our, when I say secure, I mean private, uh, more than we are because we don't want the privacy features that Monero have except for stealth addresses to protect people's balances. So uh, Monero, um, go and have a look. TPS is max TPS is for, for Monero. I suspect somebody's done it and our number would be higher. I'm sure someone from the tech team could tell you by, by what ratio because we are X amount. We're probably 25% of the size or something of a, um, of, of a Monero transaction because we haven't, we haven't done the, uh, the privacy parts but like again, whenever, whenever I mention Monero, I always want to make sure that, that I, I give them credit where credit is due. Those guys have written an amazing system. We've added layer upon layer to their system to, to make it work the way we've done with the licensing and, the, uh, and, and the, the, the validation keys and all that stuff. We've added on top that's just, that's just for us. But, but don't underestimate those guys are absolutely awesome at what they do. 
Oh, right. Um, so, 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 uh, what is the current uh, status of agreements from the very beginning? Uh, Hong Kong, Joy Telecom, Zeus, Effortel. Well, it's funny you should mention uh, Zeus because, of course, they're in India. And what have we seen happen in India? We have seen a, uh, a softening of the, um, uh, of the cryptocurrency regulatory environment. So that is very exciting. I have to be honest, uh, Joy Telecom turned out, we did, we did a trial with them. They are a traveler's sim. They are a sim that is very, very good for people uh, traveling. So if somebody wants to go off into Europe, they buy a Joy Tel sim and off they go. They use it whilst they're abroad. Uh, it's it's uh, they were a great company, uh, and uh, once again, I take my hat off to them for for doing what they did, which is getting involved very early on. But they did not drive adoption in uh, to us, not not to any fault of theirs. This is the way partnerships go. You know, you give them a try. I'm not allowed to say partnership either, by the way. Uh, this is the way relationships go. You 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 until you until you try it, until you tentatively try it, you you don't know where it'll be. So uh, nothing nothing from from that one, I'm afraid. But but Zeus very much so, and. Uh, Effortel, I don't recall. Again, we did some sort of trial. I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't recall exactly where that went, but I don't think it's going to be pushed further. I, I could be wrong. I don't think it is. So, uh, but but out of those three, Zeus is the really big one, and uh, and Zeus is 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 back to life and uh, and being pursued. Um, there are a ton of people in Brazil that have never heard of cryptocurrency. I think ETM would be great there. How are you planning to enlighten them? Okay, well. Uh, uh, that isn't that brilliant that, um, uh, that we, Brazil is one of our biggest hotspots. We have more users doing app to app transfers in Brazil than anywhere outside of Africa, I think. So it's uh, it's a really big hotspot. I know India is a big hotspot as well. So there, Brazil is it's starting to take off through um, uh, sort of guerrilla marketing, viral marketing. Uh, and we have uh, somebody that's talking to, so we've got Coinbene. Everybody pronounces them slightly different. Coinbean, Coinbene, the, the exchange that, that has got a Brazilian real pairing and is a Brazilian exchange. We are talking to uh, agents in Brazil to enable the favelas um, to, to, to have this sort of drip down effect to agents into exchanges because, of course, they need to have somebody that's got a banking partnership. Uh, and then and then move through so to to enable it there. So we've got some enablers on the ground that we're that we're working with in Brazil. Uh, when will Electronic be release uh, releasing the company accounts this year? Good question. Uh, I have a, a meeting with uh, uh, or virtual meeting. Uh, everything's virtual now, right? Uh, I've got a virtual meeting with them on Friday. Uh, our uh, the FD. Uh, so uh, he can tell me more. I, I I don't know. I just do as I'm told. Uh, will there be more transparency in regards to spending of the ICO funds moving forwards? Uh, well, I don't think um, we are we are non-transparent now. We we published our accounts. Uh, you saw appreciate it's a year ago, but uh, look, I think everyone will be happy with what our accounts look like. Um, so we're not in any way non-transparent. But what I don't do is take any time to to publish great big lists of what we've spent things on which I know will just be pulled to pieces, scrutinized, take up loads of time. Everybody will, you can't please everybody all the time. All I can say is, as a community, you should be proud of what we're doing and the cost point that we've done it for has been really good. So uh, you'll see our accounts as soon as, they, as soon as they get published. I don't know, my my accountants deal with all that stuff. And as soon as uh, as soon as they get published, they'll, they'll be out in the public domain. Uh, getting the first ones done must have been the hardest. I think we actually, I think we may have been the very first company in limited company history in the UK that we hadn't submitted our accounts because we, we had a query that was outstanding with, uh, with HMRC. HMRC couldn't answer it. They didn't know how to answer it. It was a cryptocurrency query. They, they, they were at a loss as to how to answer it. But as such, we couldn't submit our accounts. This is the first time. This is all done now. This is ancient history, but just because it's an interesting story. So that, that took place. Well, Limited companies house in the UK. This is the sort of the the, the company or the, the the government body that that look after limited companies. Been around for I don't know 150 200 years or something. This limited company structure, maybe more than that. And if you do not submit your accounts, you get struck off. And we got this notice to strike off, and we said to our accounts, "What are we going to do? This is terrible. Just submit the accounts. We can't submit our accounts. 
because HRC can't answer the query. We went, well, but this is madness. So we actually got something that got sent to Company's House. And in the history of Company's House, we went past an absolute deadline and didn't get struck off because this had never happened in the history of Company's House. They'd never had this situation where one government agency could not answer a question. And they were the reason we had to submit it. So eventually we got them submitted and it all and it was all fine and everything is, is completely fine. And if you go and have a look at those accounts, you can drill into them. There's a, uh, a figure in there that you can see and make you, you can draw your own conclusions as to, to where we were back then. And uh, uh, you'll see the new ones soon. But it is interesting nonetheless that we are out there pathfinding. We're in, uh, we're doing things that the authorities have never seen, of course. Just like anybody, when, when, you, when you're pathfinding and doing something brand new, you're always going to experience a few problems. But I don't see that there should be any problems with submitting our accounts now. So um, as soon as, I don't know, I don't know what the deadlines are. Uh, what do you think uh, about on Yavin's report? Are you happy to be validated finally by such a source? Well, that report should be out next week. Uh, I didn't realize that uh, it was out in the public domain, that it was on Yavin that was doing it. But so Core Intelligence have been uh, digging around, looking at us. Um, I mean, I, I, it's, it's a very dry uh, report in terms of, uh, uh, of, of what, what there are. There's not too much opinion in it. It's more sort of factual. But look, I, I, I think uh, it's a total, uh, to, to my mind, it's a, a total vindication that, that we're doing everything right. You know, I think you look through it and there, there are a few bits where they are slightly negative. Like I say, uh, talking about sort of decentralized, decentralized aspects and what the market think of, of, of that. But, they, but we've done that for a reason and we've done it to protect our users. There are a couple of other bits in it that, um, that you can draw your own conclusions when you read it. But overall, the fact that we've invited them in and got them to look at our statistics and the statistics are then quoted as being looked at, I think is going to be really important because it's all right for me to sit here and go, we've got 2.4 million app installs. I can do your screen grab from, from the back end of, of Google or from the back end of Apple, but anyone can bodge a screen grab together. You know how much nonsense there is in this world having a third party trusted um uh, and believable uh validator that says yeah look i've looked at those i was logged in it was the real site it was google it was apple uh, you know it's, it's it's really important to us and 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 we give them and we'll give them access to anything that they want to see so it'll be really interesting to see what the market think of that uh have you been in talks with your own government about electronic? yeah of course crikey yeah i mean uh, j just massively so uh, we we are, or, or I guess you you've seen one or two things that have gone out there that I, I they they don't say electronium. So this is government paperwork. They doesn't say electronium, but I can't imagine that it's anybody else. You know that they're making references to to businesses in the UK. Um, when I think the the, the, the references just got to be us. So yeah, we we're talking to the government. Absolutely, we we have of course we we are going to be regulated. We we are so by twenty twenty one we have to be under the FCA umbrella. And so we've built a, a whole system. We started building it years ago. We've, we've built a whole system because we've always assumed we're gonna be under the FCA's uh, regulatory umbrella. I think the application is, is due to go in any, any second imminent. So, uh, you know, that's, that's um, where we're at. Uh, are you confident that ETN's website signups are going to grow now that people can't mobile mine? Well, I've covered that a little bit, I think, already, but uh, look, what does the market want? Does the market want me? Uh, bear in mind, we've grown it to millions and people don't believe it. They don't believe the number. So if that number stops growing and we start growing outwards within our user group and start making true successes where we have case study, case study, case study, case study, real people earning, real people benefiting their lives, real use of crypto, which is what everybody wants. You can't have mass adoption without going through adoption. Most cryptocurrencies, 99.999, I could throw a load more nines in, don't have any adoption at all. They might have market participation, but they have zero adoption. Nobody uses them to buy things. Nobody uses them to do anything. They might just be market participants, which is a different thing. We are very much adopted. So are we going to see that number grow as fast? No, of course not. But that was the, that was the phase that we were in, where we had, to, we had to bring it in. We had to get wide distribution of coins so there was plenty to move around the marketplace, move around the ecosystem. But I'm not bothered because our numbers of users stack up against everybody in the market. And like I say, even if you talk about real users, real users buying real things, 
even Ethereum and Bitcoin, I guarantee there are 20,000 top ups in ETN in one week. Put us as, as for that week, the number one cryptocurrency in the world for real world adoption. It's, we, we're right up there. So maybe, maybe we, we, maybe we were behind Bitcoin, but, but over Ethereum for that. I don't know, but you get the idea. Let's, let's give them both the credit. Let's say we were number three, just in case everyone starts quoting that. But I guarantee that we were the third at least, maybe the first, but 20,000 top ups plus all the other app to app transfers and everything else. Absolutely extraordinary. So uh, sign ups, no, we won't get as many, of course, but, but does that mean that, that that's a bad thing? No, it absolutely does not. It's a great thing. Focus on now growing the crypto community's uh, belief in the project again. Make sure that people understand that, that there's real world value that can be exchanged. There's tons of it out there, and that's enough to be good. Um, I see 1,400 plus businesses in Sony everywhere. Well done. Can we, what can we expect from this website in the future in terms of new features? Oh, there are more. Um, I, I, um, it's, it's got lots of stuff for becoming an ambassador, making use of, um, uh, of, of, of promoting locally. There's all sorts to come on there. I, I've, I've literally not got to, oh, and then again, actually, I think I might have come to the end of the question. So actually, might be able to answer a bit longer. So I think the ambassador parts of it is the most important thing. ETN everywhere. We've created a whole sort of a structure for how you can become an ambassador and how we can financially help you to, to run small events. So not, not these sort of giant digital uh, global north events, but, but small, you know, we put on a little bit of food and, uh, and some sandwiches or whatever, and, and just to have a small amount of people to come in and learn about any task and learn about, um, about ETN and, and how we can drive, um, drive value and, and give benefit. And, and those people uh, will be looked after, you know, and they become ETN ambassadors, and then there's feedback and how it all works, et cetera. So lots coming for ETN everywhere, and some of that has already been, uh, funnily enough, we, we actually switched some of it off to get it live. Because it wasn't quite finished, we thought better to get it live for the expo so that everybody can see it and, uh, and understand what we're going. Get the mapping section live, get the uh, business addresses live, so we'd actually, some of that other stuff is, is a whisker away. Uh, can you tell uh, which market is growing most today and which markets and countries will ETN enter in the future? Uh, I, I have absolutely no problem whatsoever with, with publishing those figures. Uh, I, I can't tell you because I don't know off the top of my head, but I, I dare say we could ask Ellen, who's our data analyst, to, to run out and say which, from, from top to bottom, which are the busiest. Uh, and, and again, it depends what, what you call, um, I mean, the question is, uh, are growing most? So... Okay, so is that growing most by app to app transfers? Is it growing most by app top ups? Is it growing most by user numbers? So China was always our biggest, fastest growing market. Why? Because most bots came from China. So we had to take that out of our data set. So again, you see, there can be some misleading things in your data set. So what we, um, what we will have by not having any interest to the bots, that will be really beneficial to us as well for doing analytics because uh, when uh, people had realized, when the botters had realized that actually uh, some regions were getting uh, paid out a full three dollars, other regions weren't. Of course, suddenly they did. They stopped being in China, and they they got proxies and started all arriving from South Africa, all arriving from Uganda, all arriving from Cambodia. They weren't in Cambodia. They weren't in South Africa. They were the same Chinese botters that we had before. But getting rid of that actually makes our figures much clearer and makes our data uh, analytics job slightly easier too. Uh, and in terms of markets and countries to enter, I don't think we're going to be uh, manually pushing to, to, to go out uh, anywhere uh, that, that we don't have a hotspot in, it, with the exception perhaps of Ghana, I think, because there's a project there that, that we're looking at. Um, we don't have a great deal of, uh, of adoption in Ghana yet, but, but, we, but we have got the uh, ability to work on the ground there with someone. So uh, um, we might well be, uh, be, be looking there. But there, there, there will be other areas coming up. Is there a way to partner directly with ETN? How does a large player reach out to you to partner? Uh, the word partner strikes fear into my lawyer's hearts as well. For some reason, I couldn't tell you why. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I would imagine through all the usual channels. Go, you look at our, um, don't, don't reach out to me because I'm covered in spam, spam, and more spam. Uh, please Google the Monty Python sketch for that if you haven't seen it. That's where the word spam comes from, from spam email, comes from the Monty Python sketch, very good. British comedy. Um, 
So uh, my inbox is literally loaded with, with spam. And no matter what I seem to do, I always get more spam. Uh, but if you look at the other members of the team, like Ollie or, or Jonathan or the COO, Nick, reach out on their, on their LinkedIn and, and they, they, they entertain this all day long. Uh, and, and people do. You know, we've got um, exchanges reaching out and, and various other things. In fact, this expo, is, we've had a few exchanges reach out to us, which is interesting. Uh, again, it might mean that we have to wait for our US lawyers to, to finish their work before we can use some of those exchanges. But uh, we are absolutely on that as well. Uh, do you know what? I, I think I only have one more question. Timing is absolutely pretty much perfect. I can witter for 10 minutes without a problem. Uh, if someone asked you in 2017, where would you see ETN after three years? Would you, uh, what would you have told them? And has it met your expectation? What a great question to have at the end. Um, whew, that's a difficult call in terms of, uh, uh, because part of my answer um, you're going to have to read between the lines on because I'm not allowed to talk about so you can guess yourself what that means. Um, I, uh, I, I'm very, very, very pleased with adoption. We, we're actually able to be spent in, in more places and more countries around the world than I anticipated. I rather hoped we would have been um, available to use in a gig economy site. I was reaching out to them very early on, didn't get any of those, which is why we started writing our own. But I'm exceedingly pleased that we have control. Control of that gives us so much more power. For instance, straight away, had we partnered with, uh, there is a dreaded word again, had we partnered with Fiverr, remember that our, our people that would be earning ETM would still be losing their 20% uh, fee straight away. So Fiverr would still be taking 20% off the top uh, from some of the poorest people in the world. So I, I much prefer the fact that what we've done, and during this COVID crisis, we've, we've taken all the fees off altogether, but we will be having a low fee, 5%, creeping to 10% once we've got this out into the, into the wider world and it's very well embraced. We will be putting that fee, but to the buyer. The buyers are the ones with the money. I appreciate why Fiverr did it the way around they did, because they are they don't want to disincentivize their buyers, so they push the costs down to the seller. But ultimately, the sellers really feel that. And I, and I think one of our biggest differentiators from a seller's perspective is that there are no fees to them whatsoever. So I'm really pleased with any task, like ridiculously pleased, actually, uh, and its adoption and, and, and the amount of, I mean, who would think about it? Go, there have been a few gig economy sites tried before in crypto. How many of them have listed 500 tasks? I don't, I don't think any of them. Some of them have had some very dodgy things listed on them uh, because crypto has this sort of a pseudonym, a pseudonym yeah, I can't say that, uh, anonymity or pseudonymity, is that the word? Uh, so yeah, it gives you this ability to, to remain um, uh, partly anonymous or anonymous. And so, so there's criminal things being sold on, on, uh, on crypto blog, uh, sorry, crypto uh, freelance sites. We don't have any of that. So we've kept it, again, within that regulatory framework. We're making sure it's clean. And it's massively, massively been adopted. We are, we are a contender with, those, with the big platforms because we've got such vast amounts of, of, of people uh, selling stuff on this. So you can find what you're after. And that, that's only going to grow. We're only a few months old on any time. So that's going to grow and grow and grow. So we, am I pleased with where we are? No, I'm over the moon with where we are. 140 countries you can top up your airtime and data in. Never dreamed we'd be there. Never dreamed it. So it's amazing. Virtually everybody in the world can realize value to ETN without having a bank account. Did I think we'd be there? No, I didn't. So we, we've massively surpassed that. I've been a bit disappointed in crypto market terms. Like I say, I, I, I can't talk about that um, uh, fully except to say now the ecosystem is complete and we are genuinely a top five crypto by every single standard. Go and have a look at well, our Alexa website traffic is verified. So we've got the verified thing. We installed the verified thing. That's an Amazon company. They cut out all the bots. They cut out all the nonsense. Those are verified stats. Then go and have a look at all the other projects. You do your own numbers. We're a top five cryptocurrency by every single standard except one. And I'm not going to talk about what that one is. But do we deserve to be a top five cryptocurrency by every standard? Of course we do, right? We're, we're smashing it out. We've got real world adoption. And that's what everybody in crypto talks about, but no one's achieving except us. No, a handful of other people are achieving. You know, uh, Dash is out there achieving it. Monero's out there achieving it. 
some other people are out there achieving it in real world usage. Uh, Bitcoin's obviously achieving it and Ethereum's achieving it, but it's a handful, it's a handful, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny handful of real world. There's a lot of massive projects that you look at and think, okay, well, that's a massive project, look how much is being traded. But then you go and find, you try and find one person that said, oh my God, I used it to do this. You know, there are decentralized finance projects that are out there and you say, well, what, 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 show me an actual user that's done something. Not, not a crypto community member that said, oh, that's funky, that's cool, I'm gonna do it. No, no, no. Find me a real world benefited user. They, don't, like, they can literally have none and still be considered this, this sort of bastion of strength. So we, we absolutely have smashed it out of the park in delivery, 100%. And I'm really, really proud of what the team have done. And, uh, and uh, we, we definitely need to bring the crypto community back into the fold. And we need to get people that don't understand what Electronium has delivered to understand it. And we, we are on that. I can promise you that we are on that as a very much a large chunk of phase two will be to make sure that everybody's aware and we're singing from the rooftops that we are that we are an amazing project that has delivered amazing results that are actually genuinely bringing benefits and not just not just a, a bunch of, of trading. Uh, um, there's other people, I'm just reading some of the questions here now. Uh, thanks for saying thanks everybody. I would really appreciate that. Um, it's very kind of you to make some of the, some, some of these comments. So uh, I've sort of come to a to a stop a little bit early. If there are any questions, um, uh, I see. So I just had a question from uh, Nick Klaus um, Schmidt. Uh, why will you beat Bitcoin? So again, I can't talk about price point, but Bitcoin. I see. I mean, I use Bitcoin to make payments. So, but Bitcoin I see as a, almost like a cryptocurrency gold stand. People use Bitcoin and they invest in it. And Bitcoin is is probably more a speculated asset than it is. Uh, 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 an asset that is being used to, to buy things, but it is being used to buy things, but again, largely by the crypto community. So, we, you know, we've got real people that are gaining a benefit and so has Bitcoin, but Bitcoin's adoption rate because of where it's at, I think has been mostly by speculators. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to beat Bitcoin because there's room in the market for everybody. And is there room in the market for us alongside Bitcoin? Absolutely there is. We are an enabler for Bitcoin, and, and we should be an enabler. So, so somebody, remember these unbanked people can't get access to Bitcoin, but if they earn some ETN, they can atomic swap it. There are one or two places out there that will do you a swap for Bitcoin without you having a bank account. So you could go out and you could get some Bitcoin. So, so we've become an enabler for Bitcoin, and so we should be. I mean, I'm a big, big uh, proponent. I, I love Bitcoin. So uh, there we go. What else have we got? Oh, what, uh, what to plan to do? I can't answer that one. Can't answer that one. Uh, right, okay. Well, uh, there was an interesting one there about, uh, about big brands. But once again, if you're in the Western world, the McDonald's and the Burger Kings of this world, then the Western world, you've already got a million ways to pay. They're not going to be entertaining this. However, let's not rule out that those same brands, the very same brands in the developing world, if we show that this is out there and people have it and it's being passed as value round and round and there are thousands of top ups taking place, then they are very likely to embrace this there. Are you going to see McDonald's in London, McDonald's in New York take ETN? No. Will you ever see it? Probably not. It's not what ETN's for. It's not, we don't need it. You know, I don't want anyone to think, oh my God, oh no, we're not going to be in New York. We don't need it. It's not what we're built for. If we, if we had uh, a million people genuinely using Electronium every single day, that would be more than any other cryptocurrency in the world. That would put us at the number one slot. One million people using it every single day in their real lives. Uh, getting paid, remember that how many people in the world genuinely get paid in Bitcoin? It's only going to be thousands. If we can get to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, uh, people getting paid on it, on on electronium, then we're, we're right up there with the Bitcoin. But we're not trying to compete with Bitcoin, and we're not trying to get listed uh, in, in London or, or or whatever with uh, with with these big brands. That's not what we're about. Um, ETN vending machines. Well, we we do you remember the Gumball? Who remembers the Gumball machine? I love that Gumball machine. QR code on a Gumball machine, scanned it, and by the magic of um, uh, of, of 
of push notifications or some mysterious SIM technology, the gumball machine threw gumballs out. I loved that gumball machine. It was at our MWC stand uh, in Barcelona. And vending machines we could definitely, definitely, definitely work with. If you can throw a QR code up on the screen, you can have contactless vending with our API. No problem whatsoever. But what we need to do first is find again the hotspots and then find out whether in those hotspots there are likely places that will have such a high-tech vending machine uh they so we we certainly the technology certainly exists uh it's not on my radar anytime soon but it, it's really surprisingly simple to make a vending machine work with etn and, and funnily enough the guys uh, at um uh, the guys at the unlimited i think they did it down there in um, in south africa i think they got their vending machines working via etn so it is doable um, but um, uh, but I'm not sure when we're going to see it. Uh, somebody just, Martin, uh, I've been uh, guilty of activating the gumball machine a few times. <laughs> I've got a job for it. I couldn't help myself either. It was just so, it was so fun. I feel like we should have a webcam on the gumball machine so that when people make an uh, ETN donate of any kind, a gumball drops out. That would be fantastic. Somebody waving at me and doing this, which I'm assuming means they're making me a cup of tea. Let's hope so. Guys, I've got to leave, apparently. It's been an absolute pleasure. I I'm sorry uh, I have not answered absolutely everything. I really appreciate everyone coming and, and watching me witter on. Uh, thank you for being part of the crypto community. Thank you for being part of the Electronium community. And thanks for all your passion and kind comments. Really appreciate it. Stay safe. Be well.